at the 2017 Builders Show here at the Mitsubishi booth. I'm Lauren Hunter with your favorite building products expert, Matt Reisinger. How you doing? Good. You know, actually, I prefer to be called Giant HVAC Nerd when I'm at this booth. <laughs> well, it's funny you mentioned that because the first time you and I spoke was when I was working on a story on mini splits. So I have always associated you with not just Mitsubishi, but being an HVAC expert. So we're, we're going to go, you're not a nerd. <laughs> you're like, you're into this. All right. I like that. That's good. <laughs> You know, I've been uh, using mini splits for many years. I made my first trip overseas to Japan about 15 years ago and stayed in a house that had mini splits. And at that time, I'd never seen one, didn't know what it was. And the ability to control the room I was sleeping with with a one controller and set that temperature independent from the rest of the house, it, it's something I never had heard of before. I'd only seen a central unit with one temperature for the whole house. I think most people are used to that. And I'm curious to know how you're finding their reactions to having a unit like this on the wall in you know multi rooms in their house as opposed to just the venting and ducting that they're used to. It's becoming more and more normal. You know, where I am in Austin, we've got a very design-oriented community, but also a very tech-heavy community. And just like having that cool nest on the wall, people are used to having technology. That's really cool. Tell us a little bit more about the technology and how a mini split works. The technology, if you're not familiar with it, it's called VRF, Variable Refrigerant Flow. A great analogy is most American houses are heated and cooled with a compressor outside that just has one speed or maybe two speed. It's kind of like if you got in your car and the only speed you had was floored. That was the only option, just on or off. And as a result, we get a lot of uncomfortable areas in our house because you have to kick your unit on for it to change the temperature and it only has one powerful speed. These guys have a true gas pedal. They can vary their capacity. We can turn it up or turn it down and modulate, and that makes a huge difference. And you were talking about the zone system as well, where you don't have to heat the living room when everybody's asleep in their bedrooms at night, for instance. That's right. We can be a lot more comfortable if we can zone our houses. You know, my kids' bedrooms, I'm going to want it a different temperature than my master bedroom. And I may want to turn my kitchen living room area off at night or set it back severely to save energy. Or I may want to cool those down a little bit when I've got a party separately from the rest of the house. So zoning makes a big difference. And with a system like this, we can really do that very easily. Very cool. What are some of the options if a homeowner is hesitant to put these types of units on the wall? Are there other solutions? Yeah, they've got a bunch of options for these mini splits. In fact, they've got some new colors and some other designer things happening. But if you look around this booth, you'll also see they've got uh, radiator style units that you can recess back into the wall. And some of the head units, I don't know if I mentioned this as we were talking about technology, they've got, they've got something called IC3D, which is more than just an occupancy sensor. It actually senses heat. It's like that Predator movie or using your FLIR infrared. It can tell there's a warm body in the room and it'll run. And if that warm body is gone for a certain period of time, it'll set that back to save money by a couple degrees and then if it's two hours later and there's still not a warm body in the room it'll actually shut that unit off in that bedroom so there's a bunch of different settings we can really save energy on our houses with these technologies from Mitsubishi. Fantastic anything else you want to tell us about that's new and cool at Mitsubishi? Yeah the last thing I want to mention is if, if you're a builder who, who's not interested in this or your architect or designer really doesn't want this on the wall you can still utilize this technology in a bunch of different form factors. So right behind us, this is a normal looking American box that you see in everybody's houses. It upflows or it can side flow. You can have standard ductwork attached to it. But the engine that drives this is still the VRF technology. So we can have a normal looking ductwork. Or like this one hanging up in the rafters here, I use these a lot. This is a, a small and compact unit that still blows air, still has traditional registers, but it's sized to just run maybe one or two rooms. So you could run that what like I do in a master suite often I can zone the master suite differently from the rest of the house and that one little small unit can service the master bed the master closet and the master bath they can have their own zone their own temperature their own comfort setting and it's just hidden up there in the ceiling too it's it's out of sight and it looks like a normal system when you walk into that room you see the normal grills and registers or the super sexy linear ones like I use a lot no one has a clue what the engine is behind the walls Matt, thanks so much for taking us on a tour of the Mitsubishi booth. This is a lot of cool stuff. 
Lauren, thanks for joining me. It was really fun, and it was also cool, besides just the booth, to see the show village. You know, some of these technologies, builders can't always envision what this is going to look like in a house they're building, but that show village we toured last night showcased all these things, and the cool thing is it looked like a normal house. No one said anything different or said, oh, this looks so out of the ordinary. It just looks like a normal house, but yet it's got this comfort, the efficiency that you're going to get from a Mitsubishi system. Hopefully, Lauren will join me at IBS 2018.